Well, good morning, everybody. Well, we didn't get much snow, but we got snow. Amen. God is good. And all the time. All right, just a couple uh, quick things. Our football Sunday is coming up. Everything is set. We're going to have everything set up next week. So if you want to goof around with the photo booth, that should all be set up. Anything like that. People have asked about bringing soup early. You know, if you need to do that, bring it in, and then we can get the tickets to you. That's not a problem at all. Amen? Amen. Now listen, I got these, um, you know, we've been doing the 21 days of prayer. Today was to pray for churches. And I put together this little uh, prayer card like this. I love this little thing because I keep them in my pocket. I got a few of them. I put them in my pocket. As I'm walking, I'll pull them out and go, you know, it'd be a good time to just intercede or it'd be a good time to just praise the Lord. Kind of a little reminder, amen? Those are at the Welcome Center. Take it as a gift. Use them. Put one in your purse. Put one in your pocket. Whatever way works out best for you. We've been teaching on this on Wednesday night. Many people can't make Wednesday, but they've been watching it on Facebook Live. Check it out. You can back trail two weeks on it and get the six types of prayer that we have gone through. We also gave out prayer maps the last couple weeks. Everyone should have one, but if you weren't here and you didn't get one, raise your hand. This is our gift to you. We'd like you to have it where you can pray for your nation every day with some schmarts and also pray for the world. Amen. Sometimes we don't even know all the states that we have. But the map is very uniquely made. It's uh, really a, a true gift if you've lost yours or whatever. There's more at the Welcome Center. If you want to give one to a friend, there's more at the Welcome Center. Sound good? God is good. Oh, and that's right. We still got our bands out there. If anybody wants our cross equals love band, they're out at the Welcome Center too. Boy, you get a whole bunch of goodies when you come to this church. Amen. Good. God is good. Let's go ahead and pray this morning. Father, we bless you and thank you again. Thank you, Father, that prayer is so powerful, Lord, and a lot of that will come out in today's message. I thank you, Father, that no matter what I see out here, and sometimes it's, it's shaky out here, Lord, I know inside prayer works. I know that you're doing stuff, and that's what it is. It's exciting, Lord. So I thank you today, Father, for what you're going to say. And I thank you, Father, for the journey that we're on, because it's a good, good journey, Lord. And we end up, it ends up well. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you might think I was just hesitating there, just trying to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, amen. Don't give up. That's so important. Don't give up. It's so easy to just say, whatever. You know what? We win. Any way you look at it, we win. You know, once we receive eternal life through Jesus Christ, we win. But don't give up. And sometimes you want to. Anybody ever felt like giving up? Look, I'm putting both hands up and both feet. Amen. There's been many times, you know, the, the challenges of life, things go on in your marriage, in your family, in, in the church, wherever it might be. Challenges come. Don't give up. Because I always believe there's that suddenly moment. There's something about that word that has really jumped out the last few months suddenly. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it uh, again today. That there are moments that change everything. I'll, I'll never forget this. When I was a young guy, very young, just, just saved. I remember a friend of mine, I don't want to say his name, but he shot himself in the head. He committed suicide. And I always said to myself after that, what if he would have just waited one more day? What, you know, maybe the, his wife-to-be would have come tomorrow. Maybe a, a different job. Something would have changed. We just waited one more day. But he, he did it. He, he let go of this precious gift that we have of life. Life can be tough. Don't give up. Amen? Don't give up. Listen, our vision for the year, 2020, the year of sudden turnaround. Amen? And again, a turnaround is an abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a more favorable situation. I truly believe that 2020 is going to have some challenges. Yeah. Come on, can anybody say amen to that? Yeah, yeah Pastor, I know. It's only been 19 days and there's been challenges. But you notice how fast 19 days of the year have already gone by. 
But I truly believe that we're having a spiritual renewal in 2020. I'm sensing in my own life a deeperness that I want with God. Anybody else just getting hungry for God? Like, you know what? This thing is wrapping up. It's really a, you know, it's it's like a roll of toilet paper. It just goes a lot quicker (laughs) as it gets to the end. You know, it's just, it's wrapping up. Hold on, guys. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Life can be like a crazy roller coaster ride. There are twists and turns and flips, and when it's all done, it starts all over again. Anybody know what I mean? But you know what? We always come to the end of the ride, and we go, whoo, that was fun. As I get older, I don't say it's fun anymore. I say, what was I, crazy going on that thing? In fact, I don't go on them anymore. Amen. Leave that to the young people. Oh, Pastor, you are young. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, Jeremiah 29, 13. Let me just read it to you from the, New, from the Message Bible. When you come looking for me, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. This is God's decree. I will turn things around for you. Amen. I truly believe that scripture. I I believe it's in Matthew. We hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God. We shall be filled. It's when we hunger for things that they really, I I really, we, we live in a generation of multitasking. Anybody know? And they really say that multitasking is really not very good, that it's better when you focus in on something and put your attention. I've seen that in my own life that if I really focus in on something and want to learn something and stick with that with about, without letting all these distractions hit, you really kind of get it a lot better. And I think in life many times we can just try to be all over the place. I think we just center in. You know what, Lord? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the mate you have for me. I don't know the job. I don't know this. But one thing I do know, I love you. And I'm going to keep searching and following after you. Jesus put it out that it's like a pearl of great price. It's a treasure. And you, do, you sell everything to have that treasure, that pearl. And that's the way we need to be in our relationship with God. Amen? And that's why we're doing this on Wednesday night. And don't forget to pick up one of these prayer cards because what we want to do is deepen our prayer walk to understand that the majority of prayer is not for me. It's for others and it's for the kingdom of God. Amen. There's a reason why we pray for our country. We pray for our president, those in authority, Israel, because prayer works. <laughs> prayer works. The shaking that's going on in our land is probably because of prayer. Amen. And you might think it's all bad. Oh, it's not bad. There's a lot of good things that are going on. Amen. So again, we're, we're teaching that on Wednesday night, but I want to get back into this sudden, this turn around. Sudden turnaround of this new year, new you, amen? And last week I brought out that when we are born again, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, things change instantly within us. The outside still looks the same. The mind might still think the same, but there is an eternal difference within our spirit. One more time, say this with me. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. So in a sense, you know, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In a sense, we are like triune, if you understand what I'm saying. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. We are three parts. When you die, your spirit and soul leave, but your body sticks around. It goes into the dust of the earth, yada, yada. We know what the body does. Amen. It will be resurrected on that day. It will be glorified. And Jesus said this body we're going to receive is like unto his body, amen? So what we read, the little bit we read over in the book of Matthew when he visited his disciples after the resurrection is kind of kind of be like the body we have. When you go in the book of Revelation, I like that it says, there will be no more pain, no more death, no more sickness. Those are the former things. They're done. I say hallelujah to that. Can you imagine a day without even a little ache, without even a paper cut, without even a, a, a zit on your nose? 
Come on, I'm just goofing around, but you know what I'm trying to say, amen? Go with me over to 1 John chapter 5. We looked at this last week, and then we're going to build on right from here. So we're talking about this sudden change or this new you or things happening when you least expect them to happen. And this is the amazing walk of faith because things sometimes just seem to happen and you know, we say it's out of the blue. It's coincidence. I believe in divine appointments. Yeah. Let me try that on this side. I believe in divine appointments. Yeah. I believe there are times where God sets things up. Get this, guys. This is such an important thing. Free will is huge. And I'm going to talk a little bit about marriage today and the way God brings us together and things like that. But you got to remember, even in marriage, you got two different free wills operating here. And, you know, we say, oh, God, change that woman. And God says, oh, no, you're talking to me. Let me change you. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, guys. Oh, God, change that man. Well, let's start with you. The free will aspect is amazing. Yeah. When, you, when you think that it was free will that brought the curse upon this earth. You got to really get in your mind, what authority did God give man? What dominion? You know, uh, Psalm 8 talks about it. Genesis 126 talks about it. All dominion God gave to man. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. On and on. And then this free will caused the mess that we're in. But yet free will is an amazing thing. We are not puppets. Amen. This, this free will, it, it, it's so huge, guys. I can give you $100 right now. You could take that $100 and go buy groceries for your family or go buy drugs. That's free will. And when people say, oh, no, God, God, God will stop. Really? God will stop you? Come on, guys. Think about statements like that. We kind of put God in this box sometimes. You don't put God in a box. You understand what I'm saying? When God gives you free will, you have decisions you have to make within your own heart. Yeah. All right? Now, now, I'll explain that as we go on. But let's look at this scripture. 1 John 5.11. Because I talked about eternal life last week, that we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Amen? That quick. That we are changed from death to life, from, from, from corruption to incorruption, on and on, right? Not the outward, the inward. Here's what he says. And this is the testimony that God has given us. What is the testimony that God has given us? Eternal life. And you'll see that it's past tense there. It's already done. We said that last week, so I don't want to rehash all of that. But this isn't something we're going to receive. You have eternal life now. If for some reason, you walked out today, you had a heart attack, you died. If you're in Christ, you're going to be with the Lord. Amen? It's a far better place, but don't rush it. Hey Amen, we got jobs to do down here. Don't rush it. And this life, this Zoe that we talked about last week, is in who? It's in his son, Jesus Christ. He who has the son has life. Say that with me. I have the son. I have life. He who does not have the son does not have life. They're still in spiritual darkness. They're still in eternal death. Amen. Verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Who's he talking to? Us. How many here believe in the name of the Son of God? What's the name of the Son? Jesus, amen. So he's talking to us. Believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. There it is again, something that's already done, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So we see that once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Instantly, we are what the Bible describes as being born again, new creations in Christ. In fact, I read from 2 Corinthians 5.17 in a different translation last week, and it says, when anyone is in Christ, it is a whole new world. The old things are gone suddenly. Everything is new. That's good, right? But what about life? What about relationships, marriage, jobs, or things of every day life. How many here live in an everyday life? I just want to tell you guys, 
you know, I, I don't lay in bed and float, amen? I, I live a normal life like you guys do. I have a wife. We have three kids. Our kids are grown. They're married. On and on. Life is life, amen? And today I want to talk to those on Facebook Live and here that are single. Or maybe you're even divorced. Maybe you had a really bad experience in marriage or things like that. Do you know what? God still loves you. God still has a plan for you. And those that are single, sometimes you might make statements like I made. Is Mr. Right or Mrs. Right ever going to come? Are they even in the world? Is there really any good guys left out there? Are there any good ladies out there? Is everybody just wacky? I have found out that God likes to do things suddenly when you least expect it. And that suddenly that I'm talking about doesn't always mean like that. But he puts things into motion like that. How does he do it? Watch what I'm going to say. Just a prayer. Just a prayer. Just a prayer. Sometimes we just think little prayers, what can they do? Little prayers from the heart are huge. You remember Hannah? She just prayed. She was praying for a child, a, 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 a baby. And the Bible says that Eli looked at her and thought she was drunk and said, how dare you come to the temple, the Lord drunk? And she said, I'm not drunk. My heart is grieved and I'm pouring out my heart to the living God. And a year later... She had a child, right? Just a little prayer that she brought out. Lord, I want a child. Come on, guys, follow me. Because what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to lean it in one direction, but it might be for a job. It might be for a career change. It might be for a home. It might be for a marriage. It might be for a child. It might be for schooling. It could be in so many ways. And it can happen with just a prayer. Many of you know my daughter, Rebecca. She's my oldest daughter. Hi, Rebecca. Is she, is she beautiful? And the reason, you could say, say hello, Rebecca, embarrass her. <laughs> She's looking good, amen? She's gaining a lot of weight. God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let me just... Uh, that, before, oh man, can I start all over? God is good. The reason that Rebecca is named Rebecca is because of the way that God brought Diane into my life. And I want to explain that. Because many times people lose hope when they're trusting the Lord. Amen? It was about 1980. I've been saved a few years. And I was working at Pathmark right there on, it was, well, Pathmark, you know, doesn't exist anymore. But it was right there in Hackensack, right on the highway. I kind of forget what the highway was. And I remember going outside, sitting on the ledge there. They had a, a metal, a piece of metal there where the carts would go along so they wouldn't hit the wall. So I can, I can remember the spot. And I remember just praying a very simple prayer. Anybody ever pray a simple prayer? And the prayer was basically this, Lord, when are you going to bring me a wife? And it was one of those days where I didn't hear the audible voice of God. It's nice when you hear the audible voice of God, right? But let me tell you, those are few and in between. In my 40-some years, if it's once or twice, it's a lot. But I heard within me, read Psalm 37. So I opened up my head one. Remember that little black King James Bibles? Anybody remember what them? Stick them in your pocket. So when the eyes were real good, and you could read them little words. So I opened it up, and it was always New Testament Psalms and Proverbs, right? The little black one. I opened it up, and I started reading, and I came to verse 3 and 4. Let me, would you turn there, Psalm 37, verse 3 and 4? So I just want to show you the steps that the Lord took me. And remember, I said before, free will had to take Diane on this journey also. But Diane was not in New Jersey. She was in Michigan. All right? So watch the way the Lord 
has to work. Because sometimes we pray a prayer and we just think, bing, it's going to happen. But sometimes God's got to get things in order. And sometimes God's got to make sure the other person is willing. Because he's not just going to twist the other person's mind to fulfill your prayer. Come on, guys, talk to me. You know, think about it. Even when we pray for the lost, well, aren't you, when you're praying for the lost, aren't you like pulling them in? No, what you're doing when you're praying for the lost is you're taking the scales off their eyes that the light of the gospel can come in because nobody in their right mind would want to go to hell. Amen? So as we intercede and pray for people that are lost, light can come in and penetrate them that they might see the glorious light of the gospel. So you ready? Psalm 37, verse 3. Rebecca you, didn't, Rebecca, you didn't know I was going to teach on you today, but that's okay. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. She's heard this story many times, amen? Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. And then I came to verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And right there, you kind of get arrested when you're reading the, the Bible all of a sudden. Yeah, I am delighting myself in the Lord. As a young single guy, again, at that point, I was probably around 20, 20, maybe 21. Here I am seeking the Lord, living for God to the best of my ability, making mistakes, doing dumb things, but hungering for the things of God. Everybody with me? Guys, when you see me up here, not in a trillion years would I have thought the Lord... That was my desire. I used to go up into my attic and take a fake microphone and preach, and I'd be shaken doing it. But yet God has an interesting way of taking the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Amen? It's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. So I made this statement to the Lord. I read that, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And I said, yeah, Lord, I know that. But how are you going to do it? And all of this is what I heard. Keep reading. So I kept re reading. Verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Whoa. It was like a rhema word. It was like, wham. Here I prayed a prayer, and now God spoke to me. In fact, I believe that when God speaks to us through his word, it is a more sure word of prophecy than we can, even if an angel spoke to us, his word is even above that because his word is sure. No one could take that away from me, but you know what? Things didn't change overnight. You know what? We didn't have drones back then, but a drone didn't come along, and here comes Diane. Ah! You know, God is not some genie in a bottle, guys. God is working in our lives, and he's working with Diane. And if she came up here and shared, and I won't allow her to. No, no, just kidding. She would share the different aspects of how God started working in her life in Michigan to bring her now to New Jersey. And that how she just happened to be working at Calvary Temple in Wayne. And all of a sudden now... I just happened to start going there. And how now she goes to a meeting over here, and I'm over here, and I kind of notice her on the other side. All them little things that God starts putting together. Well, I shared with you that the reason our first child is named Rebecca is because of this precious story in the Bible. I'd like you to see it today with me, and that's Genesis chapter 24. Because again, what I want to try to show you, this isn't the love story of Tom and Diane Fiola, even though it's a beautiful love story. But it's more just a prayer. Just a little prayer can get things lined up in your life. That God can change things suddenly. A little prayer by a little 20-year-old kid saying, hey, Lord, when's my wife coming? And all of a sudden, everything started coming together. So here's the story of Rebecca. Are you ready? Genesis chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Say, the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. All things means? All right, means all things, right? And you go over to the New Testament, it says Abraham's 
blessings are ours. Amen. Okay. Verse 2. So Abraham said to the oldest ser servant of his house, who ruled over all, his ha all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant said to him, perhaps the woman, the woman will not be willing to, to follow me. Free will, guys. Do you see it? Maybe she doesn't want to come back to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said to him, no. Why no? Because God promised him this land, which we know is Israel today. Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord God of heaven who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendants, I will give this land. Don't go trying to divide Israel, amen? Watch what he says. He will send his angel before you. Wow, what a statement. What a statement. Because yet, like I said a minute ago, God was, uh, Diane wasn't transported from Michigan to New Jersey. God, Diane wasn't lifted up by a helicopter and brought here. But I believe an angel started tapping. And I believe an angel started tapping and brought it together. And that's how God works many times in your life. You, you're looking, you're praying, God, I need a new job. I need a career change. And all of a sudden, God will start tapping over here. And God will start tapping over here. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. And he starts leading you. Go this way. Go that way. He starts making the connections for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? Come on, guys, I'm trying to bring out the story on this end to show you a living example, but to also say it works on every end. How did you get that place? How did you get that promotion? It's God's favor, number one, but his favor is what directs us to the place. Yeah. All right? Keep going. And you shall take a wife from my son from there. And if the woman is not willing to follow you, verse 8, then you will be released from this oath. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and he swore to him concerning this matter. So the servant went. Let's see the next part of the story. Go down to chapter 24, verse 12. Isaac's servant does something I'm trying to encourage you today to do. He prayed a little prayer. Watch. Then he said, go ahead, start, start counting how long this prayer is. O Lord God of my master Abraham, please show me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. 10 seconds, eight seconds, just a little prayer. Are you guys with me? Pastor, what are you trying to say? Get God involved in your life. Get God involved in your marriage. Get God involved in your children. Get God involved in your job. Get God involved and just let out these little prayers and let God bring things together. So he prays this prayer. Let me, let me read the whole prayer. Oh, Lord God of my master Abraham, please show me success this day and show me kindness for my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water. Oh, there was more to it. I'm sorry. And the daughter of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels to drink. Do you know how much a camel drinks? I mean, I had this once. It was on a servant teaching, having an attitude of a servant. But they drink a lot of water. Gallons and gallons and gallons, and it said that he had camels. So let's just picture the scene here. This little girl named Rebecca uh, comes on out, and all of a sudden now she says, not only am I going to give you water, I'm going to water all your camels. That's getting an answer to prayer, right? Let's see. 
Let her be the one you have appointed by your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. So he praised his prayer. Let's just say 20 seconds. And watch how this thing suddenly happens. Verse 15. Ready? Read the first three words with me. And it happened. Come on, read the first three words. And it happened. Sometimes you just got to grab little parts of the Bible as you put it all together. And it happened. Before he had finished speaking, that behold, everybody say her name, Rebecca, who was born to Bethel, son of Milcah, and the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Diane came out from Michigan to New Jersey. Amen. I think that Isaac's servant was shocked. And I think many times in our own prayers, when we see them come together, we get shocked. We pray, I'm praying by faith. And then the answer comes and goes, really? It it really happened? And I don't think in a million years, I don't think that Rebecca, who was a shepherd, was going out to water her flocks, that she was thinking, I'm going to find my husband today. I'm going to find my husband today. I think she was going about her business. He was going about his business. He prayed a prayer. But God, our God, is the God of the suddenlies. Or if you don't want to take it just as suddenly, how about he's the God of the turnaround? Changes situations for your favor, amen? God just happened to get us in the right place at the right time. Come on, guys, talk to me. He, the servant, and she, Rebecca, just happened to be at the right pace at the right time. Now watch, go to Psalm 37 and verse 23. This is one of them scripture. what am I, you know, in, in the top 10, if you know what I'm saying. Ready? Psalm 37, 23. The steps, oh, let's read it together. Come on. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. How many here believe that you're a good, you're living for God today, that you've accepted Jesus and you want to live as a good Christian? Amen. So this scripture applies to for us, right? That our steps are ordered by God and he delights in in his way. Oh, but pastor, pastor, I've messed up so many times. I blew it in my marriage. Read the next verse. Just the first three words. Ready? Though we fall. Come on, read it again. Though we fall. Come on, read it again. Though we fall. Come on, read it again. Though we fall. What is that saying to me? We all fall at times. Even though I delight, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way, though he fall, though he makes a mistake. Watch what it says. He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Even when I blow it, even if you blew it in your marriage, even if you blew it with your kids, God can restore what the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar has stolen from you. Amen. Amen. Don't accept defeat. Oh, you might have a down day. Oh, you might have a blah day, but you pick yourself right up the next day and say, you know what? I'm going on, going on. Do we fall? This walk of ours, not just in marriage, but in any area of life, is a walk of faith. It's trusting God for a mate, trusting God for a child, trusting God for a job, a better future, for healing, whatever it is that we need. Let me give you another scripture with that. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. You know this one. You'll know this one. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Come on, read it together with me again. It's one of those ones that you kind of memorize. Trust in the Lord all together. Ready? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on to your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out with your minds. Sometimes you can't. If you would have said to me the day before I met Diane that tomorrow I'm going to meet Diane, I would have said you're crazy. 
if you would have said to me, not only are you going to meet Diane, God had to go to Michigan, Michigan to get her. I knew nothing about Michigan. What did I know? I was a Patterson-born kid that basically all you went to was Point Pleasant and Seaside, and that was about it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was the farthest you went to the beach. Eh? Amen. And you, you know, Patterson, and the, anyway, keep going on. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. Watch. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Put him first. Say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to work this out. I messed up. I really blew it. I blew it at my job. I, I got fired now. What, what? It's my fault, Lord. You know, you can be honest with God. He knows. If we think, oh, we're covering this up, we're not covering it up. God knows when I'm dumb. You can say amen. God knows when I do dumb things, right? Yeah, you guys, look at you. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So what I'm trying to say today is God can bring the right person, the right situation, the right baby, the right atmosphere, get it all together. He can bring that right job. Suddenly, he'll just turn it around. And you say, but I've been waiting so long. But have you prayed a simple prayer? Have you just asked God? God, I can't figure this out. Can I just say one thing as a pastor of Father's Heart to those that are single here today and you desire a mate? Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Well, I just want somebody warm laying next to me. Yeah, you want Satan laying next to you, though. He's, he's, he's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> as any married person will say here today marriage can be a little bit of heaven on earth or a little bit of hell on earth amen don't compromise don't compromise go back to Genesis we're just about done let's see how the story of Rebecca ended up Genesis 24 63 so we know that Abraham's servant went, met with Laban, the brother. He comes back into the Bible a little later on with Jacob. Yeah. Quite a story there, right? Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So now they're on their way back. They're going. They're on the camel. And look what happens in verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate. What does that tell me Isaac was doing? He prayed. He just went out to hang out with God. What is prayer? Prayer is hanging out with God. I love walks and hanging out in open fields and just enjoying God and, and the beautiful nature that he's made. Amen. I'm so thankful that God called me to be pastor up here in Sussex County. I think Sussex County is gorgeous. It's one of the pretty areas of our state. Every time you tell somebody you're from New Jersey, they go, oh, you live in that cement bowl? Yeah. No, I live in that high tax bowl, but it's <laughs> where I live, it's, it's beautiful. Amen? All right, here we go. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes, and there he saw the camels were coming. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she got down from her camel. For she said to her servant, who is that guy walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, it's my master. So she took a veil and covered herself. She could have said, that's your husband-to-be, girl, right? And the servant went to Isaac, told him all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into her mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. That a beautiful story. 
And how did the story of Tom and Diane turn out? Well, we met right after that. We got married one year later. We had a child right over there. Her name is Rebecca. God brought Diane from Michigan to New Jersey. And the rest of the story is we're married going on 37 years, three children, eight grandchildren, to God be the glory. Amen. Now, in saying that, now we prayed for our children's mate that was coming. Parents, that's a responsibility. We don't get nowadays to pick out the husband or the wife like they did back then. Amen? And let me tell you, I'm probably thankful that we don't because I probably would not have picked a great guy like Pablo for my daughter who has just been an amazing husband and father and son-in-law. I don't know if I would have picked out who Dan picked out, who Jen picked out. But God knew because me and Diane, we said a prayer. Yes. Many prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Many prayers over the years. Amen? And let me tell you, parents and grandparents, we pray for our grandchildren now daily. And we pray that God, because really, you think the next except Next to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who you're married to is going to have the biggest influence in your life. And we pray for them boys and them little girls, and we pray for because they're growing up awfully quick, guys, awfully quick. And so it is for many of us today. God is going to do something suddenly when we least expect it. And you know what we have to do? It's just one thing that we have to do. Are you ready? Rest in him. Delight yourself in the Lord. Isaac went out to the field to meditate. They didn't say Isaac went out to the field to say, where's that servant? Where's my honey? Where's my girl? Look at, let me, let just, it'll be up on the screen. Matthew 6, 34. This is the message Bible. Give your entire intention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Yeah, pastor, that ain't easy. You got that right, it ain't easy. Our, our human nature just wants to worry, just wants to... The, 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 the record to just keep going and going, but you got to grab yourself. How do you do it? Maybe it's going out into the field to meditate. And I don't mean this, guys. You know that. Meditate in the Bible means you ponder on God. Nature, you look at his wonderful work and you, you think his word through. Amen? So as we continue on with this 2020, the year of sudden turnaround, turnaround, an abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a more favorable situation. Amen, amen, and amen. I hope you took this message today, not just about the marriage part, even though I believe there are those that you want to get married, amen? And, and the Bible says it's a good thing for you to want a wife or to want a husband. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But first of all, are you delighting yourself in the Lord? Yeah. Or are you going to every bar you can, and hopefully Mr. Wright will pop out of it. He won't. Amen. After I prayed that prayer, I didn't just start bar, bar hopping, guys. I stayed away from bars. I did a little church hopping. You know, go to church services. That's where we met. Amen, sweetie? Amen. Amen, Rebecca? Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Life can be quite a journey, guys. There's no doubt about it. But I'll tell you the finish of it. We win. We win. No matter what life throws, we win. Father, I thank you so much for these precious people coming out on a snowy day, Lord, or was snow. 
Thank you, Father, that we could take the adventure with Isaac, Abraham, his servant, Rebecca. We could see that just a prayer can bring all these things in line, Father. It's amazing. We have not because we ask not. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Thank you today, Father, that I'm believing for godly marriages in this, this assembly today, Lord. Godly marriages, people, strong in their faith, strong with their children, raising their kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord, the respect to God. I thank you for that. As we wrap up today, delight yourself in the Lord. Let him be a big part of your life. If you, if you got a farm, walk on that farm, enjoy it. If you got to drive to work into the city or wherever you drive to, think about them as you're going. Let them be a big part of your life. He loves you. He wants that. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a personal relationship with him, I'd like you to have that before you go. As we saw, being born again happens suddenly, instantly. How? Just a prayer. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Let's pray this prayer simply together. Dear precious Jesus, thank you today for going to that cross for me that today I can be born again. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross, that you rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all sins and accepting me today in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.